With Raid Raptors receiving new support in the somewhat recent Phantom Nightmare release, how good is this deck when it's stacked up against 20 random decks on Yu-Gi-Oh! Omega? First, let's jump into the new cards. Noir Lanius is up first and is your normal summon monster. When normal or special summoned, you can add one Raid Raptor card from your deck to your hand that is a different level to one you have on the field. In the graveyard, you can banish it to increase the level of all Raid Raptor monsters you control by one. You'll be using this to get either Pain Lanius or Heal Eagle in most lists since they are non-level 4s that can be special summoned. Bloom Vulture is the best new card and lets you summon it and another Raid Raptor monster if you control no monsters other than Winged Beasts. If you control no monsters at all, and it's in the graveyard, you can summon it and another level 4 Raid Raptor monster. Bloom Vulture is your combo starter, extender and recovery all in one and is one amazing card. One of the two new extra deck monsters is Brave Strix, Force's big brother. Any Raid Raptor monster that has Brave attached to it as material gains 100 attack equal to its rank times 100. That means Rising Rebellion gets a monstrous 5300 attack in total. It can also set one Raid Raptor spell or trap from your deck if you detach a material, or you can add one rank up magic spell from your deck to your hand if you only have winged beast material. It's an awesome extender and support for your later combos, and it can also play under Droll too, which is so prevalent post Phantom Nightmare. Moving on to the big boy, Raid Raptor Rising Rebellion Falcon is one of the best boss monsters of all time. It's unaffected by other card effects. When XZ summoned, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls, and if it has 3 or more Raid Raptor XZ materials, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the combined attack of the monsters you destroyed. Oh, and you can detach 3 materials from the card and choose a Raid Raptor XZ card in your graveyard, it gains that card's effect until the end phase. As it's rank 13, it will need an effect to summon it. You can use any of the previous rank up spell cards or Arsenal Falcon's effect, but you'll probably be using Rise Rank Up Magic Raid Raptor's Force. During the main phase or your opponent's battle phase, target two or more Raid Raptor Xyz monsters you control and or in your graveyard, including a monster on the field. If at least two remain face up at resolution, special summon one Raid Raptor Xyz monster from your deck with a rank equal to their combined ranks, and if you do, attach the targeted monsters to it as a material. This will ensure all of Rebellion's Falcon's effects will trigger. The other spell card is Raid Raptor Roost. It has two effects. The first lets you add a Raid Raptor spell or trap from your hand if you special summon a Raid Raptor monster from the extra deck. The other lets you target three Raid Raptor monsters in your banishment or graveyard, place them on the bottom of your deck in any order, then draw one card. Basically, it's another extender with recovery options, you know, if a game goes to turn three for some reason. The new trap is called Glorious Bright and lets you negate the effect of one face up effect monster until the end of the turn if you control a Raid Raptor or any face-up card if you have an Xyz Raid Raptor. You can also banish it from the graveyard to add one Raid Raptor monster from your graveyard or banishment to your hand. The last new support card, while not necessarily just Raid Raptors, is Swallow's Cowry. You can tribute one winged beast monster in your hand and then you can add another winged beast monster with the same level from your deck to your hand. This deck has no official combo lines, since you'll have loads of potential material to summon your Xyz cards and do link summoning. Your game plan is to extend using Raider's Knight, Wise Strix, and Force Strix. From there, you can use Raider's Knight to rank up into Brave Strix, then into Arsenal Falcon, use Falcon's effect to go to Rebellion, all while adding the Raid Raptor spell and traps to your hand. You can even set up a Rise Rank Up Magic Raid Raptor's Force for your opponent's turn. If you go for the Phantom Knights package, this will also allow you to perform a Kali Yuga lock. I've got two lists for you today, both are viable, but the pure Raid Raptor is less cheesy and easier to use as you can be locked out of Phantom Knights. Let's see how we do then. Dual 1 is first against Kashtira and we smack them up after setting up a Rebellion Falcon, waiting to fire it when they have 4 monsters, dealing 7200 damage and then going to battle phase for an easy win. Dual 2 is second against Yubel. You can see me learning the deck here because I have no idea how to extend, and Yubel is an awful matchup for Raid Raptors. They managed to stop me and take advantage of my attack power and destruction effects. Dual 3 is second against Horus Shining Sarcophagus, and I'm going second. They set up a board of negates, and even with Forbidden Droplet, I don't have enough in my hand to play through the several interruptions. Dual 4 is first against Eldlich. They have no out to my 5300 attack point tower and allows me to control the game even when it turns into a slanging match. You can see here why Rising Rebellion Falcon is such an amazing monster. Dual 5 is first against Bestial, where I'm lucky enough to set up a Kali Yuga Log and Rising Rebellion on my opponent's turn. They do a good job of playing through it, but they still can't get past Rebellion. 
Duel 6 is second against Fire King Tri Brigade. Our opponent ends on Appaloosa and negates my opening, so I scoop after seeing my opponent tee up for a win in turn 3. Duel 7 is second against Whitefish and my opponent surrenders after summoning. Duel 8 is against Blue Eyes Dogmatica Horus and we're going second. The opponent manages to summon Dragon Master Magia and negate my extender, stopping me from summoning Rebellion Falcon. Duel 9 is first against Horus and we win on account of setting up a Rebellion Falcon and the opponent using Horus' effect on the Falcon. Duel 10 is second against Cash Monarchs and we manage to stop the opponent through several negates, summon Rebellion on turn 4 and shrug off any counter attacks. Duel 11 is second against Voiceless Voice, with them being stopped in their tracks after an Ash, and then I was able to extend in turn 2, with me going all the way into Rebellion Falcon, despite several interruptions. Duel 12 is second against Voiceless Voice, and this time they are able to set up a board and stop me from summoning Rebellion Falcon due to Skull Guardian's Omni Negate. Duel 13 is second against Goblins, and our opponent scoops at the end of their combo for some reason. Duel 14 is first against Testina, with the opponent getting cooked by Rebellion since they have no out. There's a bit of back and forth, but they just can't flip him down. Duel 15 is against an unknown deck and we're first. Our opponent surrenders mid-combo. To be fair, when you're playing against Raid Raptors, I'd also do this. Duel 16 and we're second against some Psychic Earthbound Pile, and we manage to stop their board with Dark Ruler no more. They interrupt a little, but realise we can go full send and scoop. Duel 17, we go first and our opponent scoops when we set up a nice little Rebellion Falcon for their turn, even after playing under Droll. Duel 18 and we're going first against Sprite, we start by setting up a Rebellion Falcon and then a second for their turn. No one has two outs to towers, so they scoop. Duel 19 and we go first, with our opponent scooping rather than having to sit through our combo. Duel 20 is first against Exosista and we manage to get interrupted, stopping our combo but we stop the opponent from starting and have resources for lethal in turn 3, so they scoop. So our final score was 15-5, to five, and is actually not that great considering how good this deck is. The start was definitely due to a lack of understanding of the deck from my part. I've not played Raid Raptors before, so I had no idea how the combos work properly. This deck is amazing at playing around interruptions, and it has so much in the tank. It can play against Droll and it outs most fields due to how strong Rising Rebellion is. Both the Pure and Phantom Knights packages are viable. It just depends if you want to set up a Kali Yuga lock or not. I don't like doing that so would choose the Pure variant myself, but if you want to win, be my guest. The deck, in my opinion, is definitely the most fun in the format, with the offset probably being the most skillful. You don't have a go-to combo line and you've got about 20 different ways of getting to your end board even before interruptions. You can go whole hog with several towers and Kali Yuga, or just play low to the ground and shotgun your opponent in their main phase with Rising Rebellion. U-Belt is a really bad matchup for the deck, but thankfully at the moment, it isn't a major deck outside of Rogue. The correct interrupt can also end if you don't have enough material to play through it. Also, as good as the tower monsters are, a Lava Golem or Kaiju can break your board, although they're pretty uncommon in this format and the same can really apply to any monster. If your opponent has no hand traps, they're basically cooked, mind you. Overall, I love the strategy, I love the playstyle, I love the design of the cards, both art and mechanically, and I love how well it plays. It's also cheap as fuck. You should absolutely be playing this deck, as you'll probably score some wins at locals. Well, as long as you're not playing against Snake Eyes.